hello and welcome to another short video and this video is about addresses that we actually use in the TCP IP model we do use several type of addresses like the IP addresses MAC addresses port number the concept of the socket and names I will just give you a brief overview of these type of addresses and we will be covering them in more details at their uh, respective levels here is a roadmap. We are going to start with the outcomes and then different type of addresses. So the outcome for this lecture is at the end of this lecture you would be able to, def to understand the different types of network addresses. In the TCP IP model uh, we do have different type of addresses like at the application layer we actually do not have a specific type of address but we use the term names. At the transport layer, the addresses that we actually deal with are known as the port number. At the network layer, we have the IP addresses. And at the data link layer, we have the MAC addresses. And finally, at the physical layer, we are dealing with the individual bits, the actual transmission happening at the transmission medium. So let's see them in detail. Well, uh, it seems like we need five pair of addresses, one pair per layer. However, that is not the case. Normally we have only four type of addresses because the physical layer does not need addresses. Why? Because the physical unit, the physical layer is actually, a, the unit of data exchange there is a bit. The transmission happens in the form of bit and which definitely cannot have an address. Well, if you uh, give attention to these type of addresses, you will see that there is a relationship between the layer and the address that we use at that layer. And also the packet names that we use for the messages at that layer so these are like the addresses are related with the layers and the packet names are also related with the layers starting from the application layer at the application layer we normally use names to define the site that actually provides services for example ccos.edu.pk or the email address like somebody at server.com these are names which we actually refer to different IP addresses okay, or different services that we are actually availing. So actually at the application layer we use names. At the transport layer, addresses are commonly referred by port numbers and these define the application layer programs at the source and destination. Port numbers are local addresses that distinguishes between several programs or processes running at the same time. A host, for example, can run several applications at the same time. And each application or process need to be distinguishedly identified by using a port number. And then at the network layer, the addresses are commonly referred by logical addresses. These are global addresses. Remember, the port numbers are local addresses. The logical addresses are global. Global mean with the whole internet as a scope, they are unique. So a network layer address uniquely define the connection of a device to the internet. Like it will identify or it will uniquely identify a host connected to the internet. And finally, we have the link layer addresses. Sometimes the the link layer addresses are also known as MAC addresses and they are locally defined addresses, each of which defines specific host or router in a network. The network can be a local area network or it could be a wide area network. So this is uh, this is a brief overview of the addresses. Now let's go a a further deeper into the port numbers. Actually, a computer can run several programs at the same time. For communication, we must define the local host, local process, and also the remote host and remote process addresses. So for uh, 
local host and local local host and remote host we can use uh, the network addresses but for local processes and remote processes we need to use the port numbers okay so IP addresses are used for the host identification while the port number are actually used to define the processes in the TCP IP protocol suite the port numbers they are actually integers between uh, 0 and 65535 and each port address is made of 16 bits now there is a difference we have a client and we have a server and there is a difference between the port number used by a client and the port number used by a server actually the client program defines itself with a port number and that port number is called ephemeral or short live port number this port number uh, used by the client is recommended to be greater than 1023 for some client server program to work properly while we will learn in a moment however the server port addresses they must be defined properly or you can say the server process must also define itself with the port number but that num port number must be specific it cannot be chosen randomly as in the case of the client so if the computer uh, at the server site runs a server process and assign a random number as the port number then the process at the client site that want to access the server and use its services will not know the port number so that is why we cannot select a random port number for the server of course one solution to solve this problem uh, would be send a special packet and request the port number of the server but this create more overhead for example the client first send a request to the server hey tell me about your port number and then it will send a response so this is like more overhead so it is better to to specify the port number for the server in advance so TCP IP they have find a solution and they decided to use universal port number for the servers so the port number for client are random while the port number for the server they are universal and sometimes they are called well-known port numbers so every client process knows knows all the well-known port number of the corresponding server processes and for that we have the ICANN ranges this these these port numbers that you can see here this is defined by the uh, ICANN okay actually the ICANN divided the port numbers into three ranges range number one range number two and range number three and they are like the well-known port numbers as you can see here the registered port number and the private or dynamic port number the well-known port number from 0 to 1023 they are assigned and directly controlled by the ICANN and this is why this is called well-known port number because the well-known services or processes they are using these port numbers okay the registered port number these are the port number state ranges from 1024 to 49151 and they are not assigned and not controlled by the ICANN they can only be registered with ICANN to prevent duplication by different processes and then we have the dynamic port numbers and they range from 49,000 up to 65,000 they are neither controlled and nor registered by the ICANN they can be used temporary as I just mentioned by the client okay so they can be used as temporary or private port number and then after the port number concept uh, we have a concept of the socket addressing the TCP IP protocol suite is not the only suite of protocol defines we also have some other type of protocol suite as we will see in a moment like we have the OSI model so actually the concept of the socket addresses is like this 
a single address is not sufficient to send uh, to, for communication. To identify a process, we need the port numbers. And to identify a machine, a host, we need the IP address. So the combination of the port number and the IP address is actually known as a socket address. So for efficient communication, we need socket addresses. And there is a concept of socket programming that is important for network students. If you want to communicate or learn communication in practical scenarios, you have to learn the socket programming. Okay. So in this lecture, we talk about uh, different type of addresses, more specifically about the port numbers. We will be covering the logical addresses in more details or in other words, the IP addresses in more detail when we will be covering the network layer. And we will learn about the MAC addresses in more detail when we will be covering the data link layer. Thank you so much for watching this lecture. Take care and goodbye.